All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I'm on my way to go and pick up a cheap Jaguar X-Type all-wheel drive V6, no less, that I bought for just £800. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but I've always quite liked the X-Type. I know underneath, basically, it's just a Mondeo, but I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with that. Oh, the ride is a bit firm in this car, I've forgotten. Okay, I mean, they weren't the last word in luxury or refinement, but for the money, they were good enough. I always thought they looked good, and they drove good, to be fair. And, most importantly, they were great value on the used market. And, I mean, you can't get better value than £800, can you? Shall we have a guess which station the radio's set to? I'm guessing either... Smooth or Classic. Actually, no, it might be Radio 2. I think it might be Radio 2. Perhaps the previous owner was a fan of Jeremy Vine's riveting afternoon discussions. Have you ever had a leaking shed? Contact us now on 88291. Have you ever been overcharged by your milkman? Email me, jeremy at ivegotbiggerproblems.com. Now, I haven't seen this X-Type, but I guarantee it's smothered in chrome. They always are. Leave the chrome alone. It does not look good. Oh, and I bet it's got a leak on the bonnet. One of those jumping Jaguars that look appalling. They were acceptable on the old Mark II, but not on an X-Type, or an S-Type, or an XJ, or an XK. Leave it alone. Leave it on eBay or Alibaba, where it belongs. They always seem to have an aftermarket V6 badge on the boot lid as well, in the wrong font, that they've clearly bought from Halfords for 2 dollars Why? Anyway, generally speaking, they're quite reliable cars. If you avoid the diesels and go for an auto, they're not too bad. The engines are pretty good, the gearboxes are pretty good. The Achilles heel, though, is rust, particularly on the sills. I'm hoping this one isn't too bad, because with a fresh MOT and a quick service, it's probably worth two grand. What on earth? That is the stereotypical old shape A-class driver. 88 years old. Still got all his marbles, he's just forgotten where he's put them. Right, enough jibber-jabber. Shall we go and have a look at this Jag? Jag. Jaguar. See you in a minute. Right, well, we're here. It's in a good colour. They always look good in grey. It's an SE model, I believe, because it's got the chrome bits on. So it's not a sport, because they're all colour-coded. Very sad that I know all this stuff. Looks quite tidy, though, down the panels. The little dent here. And the wheels need refurbishing. It looks like they've been done before, but they're starting to flake. So I think I'll probably get those done. A little bit of scabbiness on the arch there, but nothing that you wouldn't expect. Looks quite tidy, doesn't it? It's got xenons, has it? You never know with X-types, because even the, um, the standard bulbs have that dome thing around them, so I'm not, not sure. I would assume so, but not sure. It's an Anglia car, originally. Andrew Green exclusive cars. Where's that come from? L LS? Is that Leeds? I think it's Leeds, isn't it? Headlamp's got to do with the buff. Tyres look okay on the front. Again, wheels need refurbing and the same bit of scabbiness on the other side. A couple of marks there that we'll take it off. Quite tidy though, that. Quite pleased. Is it like round the back? All wheel drive, 2.5 V6. No messing around here, ladies and gentlemen. I always thought they looked quite good with the twin exhaust. Bit of trivia for you. They did a 2.1 V6, 2.5 V6 and a 3 litre. Both the 2.5 and the 3 litre came with twin exhaust. The 2.1 just had a single one. It's that sort of nerdiness that I wish I could just erase from my brain. That's not correct. That leaping jag there, that shouldn't be there. But it does have a boot spoiler. That's quite smart. Let's have a look inside then. Forgot to mention we've got not one but two keys. Oh, it works, it just takes a little bit of gentle persuasion. Inside's quite oh, I've just spotted rust along the top of the sill there. Bit of scabbiness. What's the back like? Oh, not too bad. They have these sill covers on, so really, I'd have to have a good dig around. It's a bit grubby, but nothing that wouldn't clean. A couple of dog hairs there and some straw, but again, it would it would clean up. It's got the nice black leather interior. The headlining's not not sagging. 
That's a common issue on Jags of this era. It's all quite clean, really. We've got four electric windows. You'd think in a Jag that would be standard, but it's not. I've had a lot with wind down windows in the back. Let's have a look then. Oh, radio station, let's have a look, shall we? Was I right? Smooth, classic, or Radio 2? Radio 2, I told you. Well, it's fired straight up. And jump. Radio works. Turn that off, Jeremy Vine. Have you ever been overcharged for a stamp? So we've done 95,000 miles. That's not high at all, is it, for a car of this age? What is it, a late 2004, so it is 16, 18 years old nearly. 18 years old, that's nothing then really, is it? I always love this old J-Gate gear, gear selector. Something really satisfying about using it. I don't know what it is. Has it ever been smoked in? Let's have a look, shall we? Nope, look at that. Clean as a whistle. They always seem to crack on the um, on the gear knob there, don't they? On that wood. Anyway, what have we got? Let's try the air conditioning. It's a shame we've got no screen, no sat nav. It works though. We've got that is ice cold. That is ice cold. I can't even I didn't put my hand there. What do you know? Turn that down a little bit. Right, what else can I tell you? We've got two cup holders, some storage there for your coins. Good size glove compartment. I know, like I said earlier, these get a lot of stick for being basically a Monday underneath, but I think this is quite nice. I might be on my own, but there's nothing wrong with this, is there? Don't comment on my ripped jeans, by the way, I know about it. Right, let's have a look through the service history then. Well, straight away, it looks like there's quite a bit. Four former keepers, so five owners total. Right, the last MOT was done in August. Oh, hang on. August last year, so it expires this August. End of August. I had one advise. Offside, offside front tyre worn and cracking our edges. Right, okay. Well, if you're going to replace one, you may as well replace two, hadn't you? Especially on an all-wheel drive version. It's had a private plate. HPI copies there, previous MOTs. Ah, bit of history there. It had a full service in August 21. That's a cheap service. Oil, air, screen wash. Well, it's not really a full service, but still good value at 148. It's had a new wheel bearing. Yeah, that's come from Blackpool, this car. Blackpool. Right, see if there's a service book. Uh, right. What have we got here then? Oh. By appointment to Her Majesty the Queen. Right, very good. In fact, the Queen's got one of these. She's got an X type, I think it's a sovereign three litre estate in green. And some more nerdy trivia. I think the armrest here was designed for Her Majesty to carry her handbag. There's a cutout bit in it. I think I think I read that somewhere. Right. Let's have a look at the history. Well, we're idling nicely. Of course, the fuel light's on because we're in a 2.5 V6, and it's two pounds a gallon at the moment. It was supplied by HRO in Ipswich. Then it went to Jaguar in Bradford, then Bradford. Wow, look at this history. That's exceptional, isn't it? Bradford, Ilkley, that's a nice part of the word, world. Bradford, mm, Harrogate Jaguar, another nice part of the world. Jaguar and Aston Martin specialists, look at that. This has been, this has been cared for, this car. Then it went to Great Harwood, Great Harwood, Blackburn, Great Harwood, Blackpool. 20, plus there's a receipt at 21. Wow, this has been, you know, this, look at this. Who does this? Somebody who looks after the cars, isn't it? We've run out of space, so they've got a pen and a ruler and made extra. 
So it was last done in August 21 at 90, 93,000 miles. All right, it's probably not even due one. I think what I might do with this then, it's got all the signs of being a cared for car. I think what I might do is run it to my mechanics, get them to service it, MOT it, see how bad the rust is, if, if there's any rust. It might have been done. There might be some profit in this. I think without even checking Auto Trader, I think this looks like a two grand car. So if I could spend 200 pounds on it, it could be a thousand pounds profit here. Right, let's continue my magical mystery tour then. Where else shall I show you? Shall I have a look under the bonnet? Let's knock the engine off. Let's have a look under the boot actually. All wheel drive, look at this. The boot struts still work. Just needs a bit of a clean, doesn't it? Hmm. Bit of rustiness there, where it's had some moisture. Locking wheel nut. Got a receipt here, what's this for? Receipt from Tesco in Blackpool. Every little helps. Or is that Asda? We've got rear parking sensors. Not sure that's factory, but you never know with Jaguar, do you? This one's a good clean, this, you know. Mm, yeah, I don't think it would have left the factory with those screws in that have rusted. That's what I was doing, wasn't it? Looking under the bonnet. Do the struts work? They do. They hold the bonnet up. Right. What are we looking out for? Any oil leaks? Anything obvious? Well, the top mounts aren't all rotten. The chassis legs aren't all bent. This looks like a very clean, honest car. No obvious leaks that I can see. This was quite a reliable chain-driven engine. Look how clean that oil is. It's like honey. Mm. Bit of flimsiness there. Jaguar build quality. We've got no front sensors, but it's not the end of the world. Who wants to see how this old girl drives? Shall we? And we are off. The brakes are grinding a little bit, but I think that could just be because it's sat there for a day or two. We did have a lot of rain yesterday. It doesn't take long for the brake discs to get a little bit of surface rust on them. Yeah, they're already, already better, actually. That 2.5 V6 is so creamy. I've said this before about older cars, and I will say it again. You're far better keeping something like this on the road and making sure that it gets through its MOT each year than buying a brand new EV. You just are. It's far better for the environment. So far, this drives very well. I haven't got a single warning light on. It's quite smooth. My fuel light's gone off, now I'm back on the level. My air conditioning works. It's not pulling to the left or the right. They're just so effortless, these old Jags. Even though this is the baby Jag, it's nothing like the big XJ. It still rides really well. And because it's all-wheel drive, you know in the winter months you'll get to places that most 3 Series drivers won't. Do you remember that old Top Gear episode where Jeremy drove the estate all-wheel drive X-Type through his village in Oxfordshire during a bad winter and he had somebody behind him on skis? So it must be quite good in the snow. Don't tell anybody this, but whenever I'm bored, either in a doctor's waiting room, dentist's waiting room, airport, departure lounge, that sort of thing, I find myself on Auto Trader scrolling through X-Type Estates, 3 litre V6 automatic all-wheel drives. I don't know why, but I just really fancy one. I've got no purpose for one at all. And yet I think if I could find a nice one, 
I just really like the estate version. I think it looks really good and they're quite rare. It could be a good winter run around that sort of thing. Anyway, I haven't told anybody else, so keep that to yourselves, will you? It isn't something I'm exactly proud of. I'm quite pleased with this. I think I could spin this around for profit very easily. It just needs the wheels refurbing, a fresh set of number plates would lift it, a service MOT, perhaps a tyre or two. I think I've got some profit here. Before I get carried away with myself, I'm going to take it to my mechanics now, get them to get it up on the ramp and see if it'll pass an MOT. If it will, then I'll change the oil on the filter, order the plates, book it in with the valeters, give it a good old detail. That's what I'll do. Right, I'll catch up with you in a day or two. Wish me luck. Right guys, have I got news for you. Ta-da! Like Neville Chamberlain. One clean MOT with no advisory items. Although I did have to spend a little bit more on it than I anticipated. But it's passed. So I had the service done. I've had the wheels refurbished. I fitted the new plates. It's all ready for sale. So let me run through these costs with you. Actually, I'll also go over what they found when they got up on the ramp. It's quite interesting. But before that, I must say a thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. If you haven't heard of Surfshark, they're a VPN service provider. They basically help to keep you safe while you're online. Whether you're doing online banking or online shopping, it encrypts all your details both to and from your devices, and it hides your IP address so cyber thieves can't view it. It's also handy if you watch lots of streaming sites such as Netflix, because using Surfshark you can change your location settings so that Netflix thinks you're in a different country or territory. I use it a lot when I'm in Spain, so I change my location settings back to the UK so that it thinks I'm in the UK, and then I can watch all my favourite TV shows. In addition to that, it blocks malware, phishing, ads, and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can speed up your bandwidth and make your device run much more smoothly. And you can use it on an unlimited number of devices. It's very easy to use and very easy to download. You just download it from the App Store. It's important to keep your data and your details protected. We all spend hours and hours and hours every single day online. You just don't know how much information you're putting out there. I fly around everywhere 100 miles an hour non-stop every single day, so the last thing I want to do is get my credit card details stolen or my bank account hacked into. And since I've been using Surfshark, that just hasn't happened. If you click the link below, which I'll leave in the video description, which is surfshark.deals forward slash hypecortos, and use the promo code hypecortos, you'll get 83% off and three months totally free. And don't think it's a big expensive commitment every month, because it really isn't. It's about £1.50. But it's really important to have if you do online banking, online shopping, or you just frequently visit Starbucks and hop on their Wi-Fi. Right, let me find somewhere to park, and I'll go through these costs. So, the first thing I did, I took the car down to my mechanic, and I asked them to get it up on the MOT ramp and MOT it. Because if it was as rotten as a pear and rotten on the sills, it wouldn't have been worth going any further with. But luckily, it wasn't. When they got it up on the ramp, it had, it had welding previously. So that had all been taken care of previously, so all my mechanics suggested was that they wax oil the whole underside of it, just to go over the fresh welds, basically, just to make it look a little bit neater. They also needed to refit the fuel tank strap, because that had come loose, so they did that. And what else? Oh, they did two rear tyres. The two rear tyres were quite low, so I've had two new tyres. Once it passed its MOT, with, like I say, no advisory items, I did a minor service, so fresh oil and fresh oil filter, so that was that. So my total bill at the mechanics was £40 for the MOT, £80 for the labour. Two rear tyres, they were £80 each. That's quite expensive, isn't it? Um, oil was £30 and the oil filter was £8.50, and they've charged me £10 for some seam sealer. So the total is... £275.50 plus the VAT, that was £47.10. So the total of my mechanics for a service MOT, two tyres and sort out the fuel tank strap was £322.60. In fact, let me add this up. So £322.60 plus a fresh set of number plates, they were £16, plus a valet, that was £70. Then I had the wheels refurbished. So we sanded them down and resprayed them and they look really bright. If you remember before, they were all kind of flaking and peeling, and now they look, look like new. They cost me £170. So that takes my total to £578.60. If we add in the £800 that I paid for this car, this car currently owes me £1,378.60. Now I'm thinking it's got to be worth two grand all day long, but if I try this at... Hmm, what do we think it's worth? Let's have a look on Autotrader. 
If I go onto Autoreader and try and buy this car, so we'll go Jaguar X-Type, petrol, automatic, four-wheel drive. We'll put the mileage in up to 100,000 miles because I think the mileage is a real selling point on this. It's only done 95,000. There are 47 cars available. The cheapest in the UK is a y Reg. This is a, 2000, a late 2004, don't forget. That's 1,500 quid. 1,800 quid, that's sold. 1995 Cat N, okay. 1995, two grand. Mm, that's an 03 at two grand. Oh, that's an interesting point. It's ULES compliance, isn't it? Of course, being petrol. There's another selling point. Another one here with a leaper. There's somewhere at two and a half grand. Hmm. Could be worth two and a half grand on this. I think what I'll do is try this at 2395, 2350, 2295, that sort of figure. So if I get if I could get 22 for it. Desmond 22. 137860. 137860. If I got 2200 pounds for it, take off my costs. That would leave me with a grand profit of £821.40. It's not bad going, is it, that, really? The thing that I like about this cheaper end stuff is that it's a really great return on investment. Bear in mind, I only paid £800 for this car. I could be looking at an £820 profit. Well, I think that's about it, then. So, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you. So yeah, cheers guys. Oh, don't forget to check out Surfshark. Surfshark.deals forward slash high peak autos. Right, I'll see you next time. Adios.